Hey, this is Dr. Amanda from Street Smile Solutions, and today we're going to go ahead and jump into class three correction. We're going to be talking about class three correction in growing children. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about something I've been wanting to do for a while, which is talking about face bows, reverse pull headgear. And I think a lot of dentists are very um, intimidated by this, and it's really actually not that big of a deal. It's actually easier than you think. So I'm going to walk you through it with a demo. First of all, before you start jumping into doing something like this, you need to really assess the patient and check a few things first and make sure this patient is a good candidate for this procedure. How do we do this? Um, number one, you know, you're going to go into looking at the pano panoramic x-ray, looking at the growth, uh, checking out the skeletal growth, checking out um, the age of the patient, how much growth is left, the direction of the growth. I do encourage you, matter of fact, I don't just encourage you, I strongly recommend that any patient you're going to do this on, that you go ahead and have a CEPH, and not only have a CEPH, but have numbers on the CEPH. If you do not know how to interpret these numbers, you can connect with me. I'm glad to help you on this and train you on this. Um, it's actually quite inexpensive to have it done for you, but the actual interpretation, um, you need a little context behind it. Because what you're trying to look for is a predictable case to do growth modification, class three growth modification. A small percentage of uh, class three patients are so severely skeletally um, you know, deficient that they're most likely not going to be able to be successful with this procedure. And those patients, we need to flag them and make sure they're getting to ortho and getting in the right funnel later for the jaw surgery. Doesn't mean they can't go ahead and go through these procedures, but they really need to go through it with an orthodontist. But if it's a very minor correction, you can go ahead and do it yourself in office, in-house. All right. Anyways, so this is my favorite kind of um, reverse pull headgear. This is something that's been around for 100 years. There's nothing new to this. Um, it still works the same way, and it's extraordinarily effective. We're not just tipping teeth. We're growing jaws. Um, we're helping to advance the airway. We're making the airway bigger. It's a win-win-win for the patient. You really can't go wrong with this. Um, the main thing is compliance, and the good news is the patients don't have to wear it to school. So you really, I have zero problems with compliance with patients. I also know what I expect from the patient. I know what I expect to see from appointment to appointment. So if they're not wearing it, um, then we're going to go ahead and call them out, let the parents know. Of course, you can use a, pro, you know, like a compliance program like dental monitoring, which I think is amazing for this kind of thing, because you really don't need to be seeing these patients that regularly, but you do need to be checking in on them. Okay, so first thing you're going to go do is take your reverse pull face mask out. This is my favorite type. It's really streamlined. It just goes right down the middle. There's ones that have two bars on the sides. Those are very uncomfortable to sleep with, so I would highly recommend this one, okay? So there's two components to it. There's the forehead component, and then there's the chin component which is right here. This is the component that you're going to use to attach the um, elastics. All three of these are movable with a hex screw. So it's, keep in mind I'm going to fit this to myself and I haven't done it yet. So I'm, I'm literally winging this as we go along. You're going to get a hex screw in the package. Don't lose this. Don't give this to the patient. Make sure that you um, keep it <laughs> just in case there's a problem because you don't want them trying to modify it themselves. So you're going to go ahead and loosen up your hex screws. Okay, this one may not loosen up too much. So loosen them all up, okay, and keep them relatively mobile. You're going to go ahead, usually I'll start with the forehead one. Let's see, it's kind of loose. Just kind of put it, put this where this goes. Oops, trying to center this. <laughs> it's a little different doing it in a mirror, right? Okay, oh my goodness, it's so much easier doing it on a patient like this, okay? So I guess I have a big head. Kids are a little bit different. You can go ahead and mark it, tighten it, nice and tight. Okay. So now I should have my forehead and my chin part done. Why am I crooked? Okay. Well, don't do it crooked on your patient. Okay. It should be lined up with the middle of the face. Okay. Something like that. There we go. Okay. So this part is pretty good. Maybe I'd put the forehead up a little bit more. And of course, have it less crooked. And then this part right here should be downwards and forwards of the, the occlusal plane. So something like this. Okay. So you're going to go ahead and secure that as well so that it's all nice and flat. Okay. And then 
that's pretty much what it is. So once you got that going on, now another little tip that I can give you for these is that these really tend to get really sweaty. The little, they give you extra pads in the package, but um, they get really sweaty. The kids tend to get like break out, especially during the summer. So you might want to line them with moleskin. Like moleskin, like from Dr. Scholl's works really well. Um, or you can put a little like talcum powder or um, like cornstarch so that they don't get sweaty. But I like the moleskin. I think that works really well. So I like to reline it. Um, well, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. You're just going to wear it like this. And then you're going to have to attach it to some type of appliance. Usually I'm going to go ahead and do... Um, either an expander, some type of fixed expander, removable expander, something like that, um, to go ahead and loosen up the sutures first. The vast majority of patients that need some type of ex uh, protraction face mask are also going to need expansion. It comes, it's all part of one deal. So I don't think I've seen anyone that couldn't benefit from it. So go ahead and make sure you finish your expansion first. I usually wait till the expansion's done so I know where it is. Then I start this in the retention phase of the expansion. Um, there should, you can have hooks soldered on your expander or on your shorts or on your sagittal or whatever type of appliance you have. And the elastics will go from the hooks that are right here to these little kind of zigzag bars right here. Um, usually I'm going to use eight ounce elastics on each side. Hang on. I'll show you how to hook them. This is not eight ounce, but at least it's an elastics. Um, this is 6.5 ounce. Um, sometimes people will just do double, like two, but you usually you need about a half inch, like the regular elastics are not going to work, like in terms of diameter, because they're not going to stretch that far, but you're going to have to try, try it in. So there are some companies that make extra oral elastics, they don't all, so, but basically you're going to go ahead, oh my goodness, making it crooked, and you're going to go ahead and hook it like this, okay, one, two all the way on the back, both sides, bilateral, okay? And then it's gonna be the mandibular plane, excuse me, the, the occlusal plane should be moving downward and forward, just like normal growth. So it shouldn't be straight out, it should be downward and forward. So when you try it in, it should look really even, um, really balanced, um, not like canted at all, and the plane should be going downward and forward, probably eight ounces, one eight ounce elastic on each side, probably a half inch elastic, but you might need a slightly bigger diameter elastic in order to hook it, hook on it properly. So you might need to get a couple different extra oral elastics. Sometimes people will increase the, um, the force to a little bit more than eight ounces on each side, but I would say start with that and go from there. So that's pretty much it. They need to make sure that they're wearing their Protraxin face mask or reverse pull headgear, um, minimum 16 hours a day, um, bare minimum. So that means it goes in the second they're done with school, they wear it during homework, gaming time, they take it out to eat dinner, they put it back in, they wear it for bed. Um, it shouldn't be falling off. The pieces shouldn't be loose. They shouldn't be mobile. It should be relatively secure when they sleep. If it's coming off when they sleep, you need to reevaluate that. Sometimes the force of the protection face mask will loosen the appliance if you have a fixed appliance. So that just happens. Be prepared for that. Um, if you have like a negative vertical, like like if the lower teeth are blocking the the jump of the upper teeth, you might need to put some bite wraps on or some type of appliance that has occlusal acrylic so that it can jump better. So, but ultimately, if you wear this, you should see about one millimeter change per month. If you're not seeing one millimeter change per month, guess what? It's not getting worn. So, or it's not being worn the minimum 16 hours that we're saying. So if they're wearing it 10 hours, just a night only, it's not gonna work. You have to wear it 16 hours. And they can wear it more than that. On the weekends, if they want to wear it all day long, great. They're going to get amazing results. Things are going to go quicker. So encourage them to wear it more than 16 hours. Because usually most patients, when you tell them 16 hours, they're like, okay, that means I can just wear it 10 and get away with it. No. You need to be very clear. This only works at 16 hours. How long will they need to wear it? Well, it's about, like I said, up to one millimeter a month. Um, if they're actually wearing it properly, if they're wearing it subpar, it's not going to work at all. So it's a waste of everyone's time. Um, you know, how many millimeters do you need? Basically, you know, how much advancement do you need? You're going to have some relapse when you stop. So you always want to advance a little bit more than you need. But for the most part, I can easily get three, four millimeters of advancement with this. I might relapse one millimeter. Um, but that's just, if you can get it from an edge to edge bite to a positive overjet, with a little extra slack, you're pretty much good. Make sure your vertical is pretty good too. And then you just got to keep an eye on it because 
they can, depending on what type of growth issues they're having, um, if it's just maxillary deficient, usually you're fine at that point. But if there's mandibular um, prognathism, prognathism um, you're going to start to see some more problems possibly creep up later. But again, this only works if they're still growing. So you should know how to um, analyze growth in a patient. And if you don't, feel free to connect with me. I'm glad to teach you. All right. Thanks so much. Got any questions, please visit straightsmilesolutions.com. Any other questions about correcting class three bites? All right. Have a great day.